I saw a comic where a centaur and Medusa had children, and the child had a human body and then multiple horse heads. Ah, I like that. That's Zach's nightmare. Yo, where is Zach? Let's do an episode about Zach. All right, this is our episode about Zach. Zach's a really cool guy. He's a ranger. Sick shoes. He is a ranger. Doesn't like horses very much. I he wonder likes- if he's expecting a dual wielding or tracking. Uh, I mean, archery? R- ranged weaponry. He likes space. He's in search of darkness. He does like space. And he likes folk music. We have listened to records together. And folk metal. He also likes people. Camping. Yeah. He's good at hugging. Weird music. He has a beard often. He has a happy smile when he hugs Ed. Ed has a happy smile, too, when that happens. He used to like fish. I think he still likes fish, but not as much as he used to. But not like to eat them as much. Mostly yeah. just to look at them. Yeah. He always wanted the fish paste from yes. Ikea. I, oh, and he made us eat octopus buttholes. They have buttholes? He did not make me do that. Pig buttholes. I'm not going to ask it again. This is Bardic Mystery Talk. Bardic Mystery Tour is a 5th edition D&D actual play about a rock and roll band who solves mysteries while they're out on tour. I'm Ed, and I'll be your DM. Hi, I'm Emily, and I'm playing a bass-playing, nature-loving Fearbolg. He's a lore bard and a member of the band Dream Lacer. He's trying to get better at names, starting with Lars, our dog-sized gerbil. Nora here, playing the tabaxi performer Windy Snowy Mountains. Wendy's got her kitty cat eye on the crew's new giant gerbil companion, Lars. She's also got a keen eye for crossbow shooting and likes to snuggle at night with her stolen hippogriff plushie, Oliver. Hello, I'm Brayton, and I'll be playing Staff again today. Staff is a changeling guitar player in the band Dream Lancer, but his bandmates have yet to discover his true identity. Staff often parades around in the form of... Roger Stewart, but we'll see what other personas show up this session. Last time on Bardic Mystery Tour, the gang ran into Nalaren, the pibbling of our beloved Fearbolg. Joining with the crew, Nalaren enhanced the party through their great elven wisdom in the form of proverbs. Gang came across a series of puzzles that didn't seem to be going the way the creator intended. We join them as Wendy and Staff are sliding down trapdoors to face a mighty Minotaur. This is Bardic Mystery Tour. Wendy, you slide down this chute and you fall into a room and land in a pile of human bones. Ew, why am I always landing in things? Eat them. They're dry. I smell them. They smell dry. I look around the room. You see another hole where another chute comes from. Actually, there are like four. You came out of one of them, and out of it slides Roger Stewart, who falls into a pile of bones with you. Ugh. Oh, hey there, Raj. Hey. Glad I have a friend down here. Did it hurt me when I fell? Yeah. I hold my back. Then you hear a loud scream. Windy, be quiet. <laughs> In pain my, I'm here. hungry. Now you die to the Minotaur. I look around. Is there a minotaur? The room is surprisingly well lit for being the inside of what looks like a cave of some sort with no natural light. And you see an eight foot tall person with a head of an ox. Let me see this again. Is that what a minotaur looks like? No. And you see an eight foot tall person with the head of a bull. And its mouth is gaping open. And they have hairy legs and hooves. And it's a lady minotaur. Um, I would like to take my bandana and cast press a digitation to turn it bright red. Then roll initiative. 18. Six. All right, Wendy, continue to cast press a digitation. Press a digitation. Press a digitation. Press a Prestidigitation. 
I cast prestidigitation and turn my handkerchief bright red and then wave it at the Minotaur to try and get him to charge it. It's that lady I explained this once. Also, I want to point out that it's clearly a lady, and you were like, no, mammals don't always present this way, but you would clearly be able to tell the satyrs because their top half is human. Just their legs are oh, goats. Oh, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, well, it's too late. Well, maybe if our DM had explained what a satyr was I don't for the have listeners to... who've never heard of one. Wait a second. If you've never heard of a satyr and you listen to this podcast, tweet at us. They could have picked it up in episode three. I just find it hard to believe you would find a D&D podcast to listen to and not know what a satyr is. What if whoa, it's your whoa, first whoa, D&D whoa. podcast? I'm ready to get egg on my face when you tweet at us. But let's talk about this. Like, do, do female centaurs also have boobs? Yes. But how much of them is horse and how much of them is human? Only the like, human. Wait. Is your human half 100% human? Is your horse half 100% wait. horse? You're saying they have boobs, but they're hanging down on the bottom of the horse body? Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> and they're furry. I can explain this very easily. They're one half half human and one half three quarter horse. And their three quarter horse part doesn't have boobs, but their half human part does. That made everything so much clearer. Then the Minotaur swings a great club at Windy. Wait, I just want to reset. This is a female Minotaur? Yeah. Well, how am I supposed to know that? She has boobs. Well, you didn't include that in the description. Yeah, you said that all Minotaurs look like a man with a head of an ox. Wait, what does this Minotaur look like? Like, how much what of it is human? What if a female Minotaur is, like, half man? That's what I'm trying to ask. What does a Minotaur look like? It has like hooves and its ankles are actually its knees or something? It has something? human arms and chest and bull head and legs and tail. Does the tail stick out of the pants or no? What about its stomach area? I think human. All abdomen human. Okay. I also Furry. think all Minotaurs have their nose pierced. No, that's, a, that's actually not Wait, true. Wait, how much of you is your abdomen? Like is your like pubic region your abdomen? No. no. I mean, like, centaurs normally go to, like, your waist, right? Well, which waist? The, yeah, that's confusing. The human waist. Yeah. Horses don't have a waist. That's just poop. What are you talking Horses about? Waists? Then how would they wear pants? So the, min- the female minotaur does not charge my red flag waving. Oh, she is swinging a club at you. Does that count? No, I want her to, like, charge it like a bull, you know? Not just any club. Like, a great toro, club. toro, you know? All right, roll a perception check. 18. Did you also roll one? 19. While the Minotaur is screaming and swinging her great club at Windy, you notice that despite screaming, the mouth of the Minotaur is not moving a bunch, and it looks a little bit fake. But she still swings it at Windy. Does a 13 hit you? No. This has got to be that satyr from before. Wait, the satyrs were like... Five and a half feet tall, and this minotaur is like eight and a half feet tall. Yeah, it's wearing the top half of a mascot. No, it's both satyrs on top of each other. What color are the pants? Double stacked satyrs? Yeah. Did you notice what color the pants are? And the head of the minotaur is like bright, like fire engine red, not like minotaur um, brown red. Ruddish. Ruddy. Was it swarthy? That's from the song. Is swarthy a color? I thought swarthy meant something else completely. Yeah, I swarthy did too. means like sun. Beaten and dark. I thought it also meant like fat. Like and like big. maybe all oily. No, swarthy is like a skin tone. You let me know when it's time for me to unveil the truth. What do you mean by that? When it's my turn in combat. Fine, it's Raj's turn. Staff in the form of Raj, which is normal, says, Hey, this is a fake. This ain't a real minotaur. And then I try to tackle it. Okay. Do you know how tackling works in fifth edition? <laughs> I roll a d20 strength check opposed to you. I got a five. Um, I forgot that I'm not very strong. You don't succeed, but only by a margin of about 20. That ain't bad. That was close. It was close. And then I'm going to give Bardic Inspiration to Wendy. Thanks, bro. All right, Wendy. Um, I'm going to attack the Minotaur with my rapier. Okay. 13. Oh, why don't I know the armor class? Emily. Yes. Are you rooting for us to win or lose in this battle? 
I'm just like, you know, hanging out with some flowers. Did you fall? What happened to you? Yeah, I didn't. Did I fall? I fell. No, he's up in that hallway. Oh, yeah. I walked into the next room and there were flowers in a puzzle and I was trying to solve That's it. That's right. And, and a gerbil. That, yeah, me and my, my good pal Lars are hanging out, sniffing the flowers. Hanging out with Lars down on 6th Street. Under he knew years, that maybe. I was in trouble. I was feeling much like the devil. Something, Something burning deep inside, inside of me. me. Yeah, that's what's happening with me. Wendy. 13. That's a miss. Dang it. And then the Minotaur says, I'm not a fake Minotaur at all. And she swings her club at Wendy again. But this time hits a 21. Ooh, that hits. And does 19 damage. And then she says... I'll show you how real I am. And swings our club at Roger. Cutting words. My words are poison leaching into your soil. You can't resist them no matter how you toil. Does a 10 hit you? No. The club misses Roger Stewart slamming into the pile of bones and you hear tons of cracking bones beneath you or beside you, depending on if you're above it. But also, does the great club seem like maybe it's damaged? No. Dang it. All right, Roger. Oh, yeah? Well, if you're a minotaur, then why don't you prove it by trying to get out of this maze? And then I take the dodge action. Dodger Stewart. Windy. I am going to try and attack it with my rapier again. Okay. 16. That's a hit. 11 damage. Ooh. And then she says, we're not even in a maze, you idiot. We're in a pit. It's a cave. Because you're not really a minotaur. That goes out to the Great Mesa. And then she swings her club at Windy. After all the taunting I've been doing? Does an 11 hit you? Nope. And then she swings her club at Roger Stewart. At disadvantage. Does a 23 hit you? Yeah, but it was a disadvantage, so you take the lower one. I did. 26 damage. Are you serious? I wouldn't have fucked around if I didn't know. (laughs) Okay. Roger. All right, I'm going to cast Cure Wounds on myself as a second level spell. Okay. And I'm going to do my special College of the Road trick to make it even more powerful. If you've been hit, point me to the painful bit by the power of this spell. I'll cure your wounds and make you well. And if you're nearby, I'll be your favorite guy. I'll heal you up quick with the secret power. That's my, uh, that's my turn. Windy. I would like to cast Shatter on the Minotaur. When I get really worked up, I make quite a clatter. Stomping and raging about until we resolve the matter. But when we reach the point of no return. Okay. Do I get a constitution save? Yeah. 13. Okay. For half? Yeah. 19 damage. When you cast shatter on her, you hear a cracking noise. It sounds like wood splintering a little bit. Sweet. And then she swings her great club at Windy. Oh boy, does a 27 hit? Yeah. 17 damage. Uh, I'm passed out. And then she swings her great club at Roger. Yeah, right. Does a 17 hit? Yes. 17 damage. Hey, hey, baby. And then a door opens up. It's like uh, nine feet off the floor. And you hear somebody call out. And they go, Ocean, hold on. Hold on. Don't beat them up. They weren't supposed to come down here. I did the trap wrong. Is it index? Yeah. You see standing in the doorway, backlit. A pyramid-headed, cubed-bodied person 
And the Minotaur stops beating on you and goes, what? Index, as we're going to refer to them from now on, says, yeah, yeah, I didn't put all the cubes in. So uh, that's a box. He has to come out. And then uh, the Minotaur lifts the Minotaur head off of her shoulders and is clearly actually a Cyclops and not a Minotaur. And was looking with her one eye out the mouth of the bull head. And she says, what about this one? Index says, uh, I don't know. I think that Frumby just didn't want to have to deal with letting somebody out when he, they, they messed up. Yeah, Frumby's been lying to me twice already. Yeah, Ardo left a key in the thing when she wasn't supposed to. And then Ocean says, it's not Ocean, it's Osin. Oh, I thought it was Osen. Osin. O-C-Y-N, Osin. O-C-Y-N? Osin. Okay. I don't know what to tell you, buddy. But Osin's like, oh, so you want these both go up with you then? And Index is like, I guess we can figure out. We'll ask Arax what um, we're going to do with them. Because this they got kind of a messed up trial a little bit. Nothing really went right. And you better heal my friend. Oh, we don't have any healing magic. All right, I'd do it. If you've been hit. the power of this spell I'll cure your wounds and make you well and if you're nearby I'll be your favorite guy I'll heal you up quick with the secret power and trick I didn't roll well though I think any hit points will make Wendy happier than what she has right now. I've healed Wendy for 14 hit points. Ugh, I feel so much better. Wendy, I saved the day. Oh, how? What happened? All we had to do was prove that this Minotaur was actually a Cyclops. Oh, okay. Interesting disguise. All right, well, what now? Are they just going to let us go? or? Yeah, once you solve the puzzle, they have to let you go. So let's get out of here. All right, we try to leave, I guess? Index points at this staircase in front of them, and they're like, yeah, just come up these stairs, um, I guess. All right, we go up the stairs. All right, you walk up the stairs to a weird landing that has four doors in it, and then also another set of stairs that goes up, and Index just says, just keep going up these stairs, though. But where are our friends? What? We have friends. They have names. No, Lauren? Yeah, I don't know. We have to find out where they went. Cause and the bass player, and Lars, and Frumby. No, Frumby's our friend. Well, Fr- I think that we're becoming friends with Frumby. He's just not sure yet. We're integrating him into our group, slowly oh. but surely. Okay. He doesn't fit in here because he's not really a goblin. I'm not a goblin either. Yeah, you're one of those guys from Silent Hill. No. <laughs> nope. More like a robot. You're one of those guys from Gravity Falls. I've never seen that. Okay. Oh, like um, they have like Illuminati heads? Yeah, it's just the one... Like, ultra evil guy, but whatever. Oh. Hey there, dreamers. Nora here. A little bit of a funny story for you this week. Um, Bardic Mystery Tour had two Twitter accounts, and I was using the wrong one. But we got it all sorted out now. Don't you worry. I am trying to make sure that the stuff that we publish on social with each episode is relevant and interesting. So if you really hate it, tweet or comment or gram spam me to death so I can change it. But I hope everyone's hanging on out there in this 2020 hellscape that we find ourselves in. I do have some exciting news. We commissioned some new art from an amazing artist that is featured on this ARC's postcard. So you'll get to see how we envision all the Dream Lancer characters. The postcards will only be sent to our Patreon patrons. And our patrons will also get to see all of our art first before we publish it to the public. So please consider supporting us on our Patreon. Your support helps us buy new equipment, commission new art, and generally be fun and creative, and we really appreciate it. Also, make sure to spread the good news of Bardic Mystery Tour to all your friends so that they, too, can receive awesome postcards and listen to us talk about flag design and Lego helmets and sundry other topics. I'm also here today to tell you about an awesome podcast, just like ours, that you might want to check out. 
Dark Dice is a horror actual play created by Fool and Scholar Productions. Brayton actually sucked me into listening to the entire podcast because I started episode one and I absolutely loved the production quality. They cut out all the table talk and just focus on the actual story, including music and sound effects to set the mood. I think the voice actors are one of my favorite parts, too, because they recruit people from all around the world and bring a unique accent and voice to each character. And of course, each episode is a short 30-minute listen. And it's not just the pieces behind the podcast that make it fun. The story is also great and features an in-depth backstory for each character that you learn about gradually. Six travelers are searching in the dead pines to find the town's missing children, but an unknown sinister being keeps infiltrating the party and killing them one by one. Will they figure out who the monster is before it's too late? Only time will tell. Dark Dice is free to listen to on your podcast player of choice, or you can check them out at darkdicepod.com. On a more personal note, I finished Dark Dice and moved on to more of their productions, and you really can't go wrong with any of them. And listening to their interviews directed me to even more great podcasts, so now I'll never not have listening materials for my evening walks. Anyhow, give them a listen if you'd like, and we'll send you back to Dreamlancer. All right, well, let's head up the stairs. All right. You go up the stairs, and you enter this room that has these six large flowers that are like six feet tall in it, and six pots, and a fear bulb, and a giant gerbil. And above the doorway that you assume is the exit is a set of six flowers that are in the order red, blue, purple, orange, yellow, blue. What? And the six flowers are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. What? You said that they were red, blue, purple, blue, light blue, blue. Yeah, but your character is blue, orange, colorblind, right? Oh. Is that actually true? Well, no, not actually true. Um, So my character has yellow, like can't see yellow. And all the colors that have yellow in it, it's called Traenopia. And so... Like orange would be hard and yellow would be hard. They like they look like pinks because they don't have any yellows. So that that's a thing. But if you're saying that it's red, so I thought okay, I thought that you were like blue orange, like you got blue and orange confused. No, just How mostly did you know that because he was around when I was making my character. I know things about your character that they don't know too. Or did you forget that you talked to me before in your life? <laughs> yeah. So wait, uh, he blocked that part out. Wait, wait, explain this to me then. Okay. So you're saying, so you would be able to differentiate blue and orange. Yeah, yeah. I think like if you're thinking of normal, like the, the standard rainbow array, like on a pride flag or like in the, I guess in the sky is different because it's all mushed together. But if you're thinking like those very vibrant colors, they're different enough that he'd be able to tell, but it'd look more like magenta and like a salmon y pink and a light pink for red, orange, yellow. And then when you keep rounding towards purple, it's like shades of blue. So he'd be able to probably tell the difference unless you... Like if I had a six pack of Crayola crayons, yeah, you could tell the difference between those. Yeah, yeah. But if I had like orange and pink... It's harder, way harder. And most of my like army green clothes that I keep being like really adamant about getting, they're probably just like, they look great to him. So they probably don't actually match. They might not actually be green. Wait, explain... What'd you call it? Triton? Tritonopia. Explain this again. You have low yellow? Yeah. So these dice, can't see them. Well, they look like l- if gray. They're like so, light. Well, they're weird because they're translucent, but like pinkish. So like green and blue would look similar because... There's no yellow in them. Green doesn't have yellow in it. Yeah. like So when you talk about different kinds of colorblindness, there's like cones are the thing that help you see the color. And so there are certain cones that are missing. Traffic cones. Not traffic cones. Ice cream cones. Sure. And then you have to use trigonometry in conic sections to understand it. Probably, I think. So, sorry. I should have been able to solve this puzzle. All right. So I should have made the puzzle with non-primary and secondary colors. Yeah, but it's fine. Okay. It's cool. We'll retcon that later. I see my friends. And then the Laren comes up another set of stairs into a different door. And they're like, hey guys, how's it going? Where did you go? Oh, I fell down this chute, and um, I went to this room with this, like, huge chessboard in it, but there weren't any pieces. 
And the door, oh. there was just a door that was open to the staircase. Were there pieces, but they were all just like wafers? That's called checkers. No, there was just nothing else in the room, so I just walked through the door and I came up here. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot easier. We had to beat a minotaur. This place seems really weird. It's like they have all these puzzles, but none of them are in very good order. None of them are actually ready to solve. And then the pixie that was flying around giggling you goes, oh my god, you're colorblind? And she flies down. she's like, that's so embarrassing. I was laughing at you for not being able to do this puzzle correctly, but that's really embarrassing yeah, for but me. but what if he was just stupid and you were laughing at him? That would also be rude. Do you say that? I hope you yeah, say that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then Index goes, that's really insensitive of you, Mince. The pixie goes, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's cool. It's cool. So... Do uh, you guys want to help me get these in order? Since, according to this writing, I can't do it. Is there a door that leads out of here? Yeah. Does it have a keyhole in it? No. Oh. Yeah, I'll help. All right, so we plant the red one in the first pot. Okay. Then a blue one in the second pot. Okay. Purple one in the third pot. Okay. Then we get an orange one. Put that in the fourth pot. Okay. A yellow one in the fifth pot. Okay. Then I get a blue one and I put it in the sixth pot. Except for we have to correct all those to being actual the right colors, what they should have been. Oh, do you actually want to do that? No. Oh, good. <laughs> Sounds like an editing nightmare. But if you're listening to this podcast, and just pretend like we said like really relevant things. The light above the door lights up and the door slides open. Ha ha. Once again, Dream Lancer succeeds. And then Frumby comes in. Hey, man. Uh... I go give him like a low five. He kind of softly low fives you and goes, I thought you died to the Minotaur. No, but I'm expecting that you're going to be nicer in the future. And he's accompanied by a very short human that has a claw for one of her hands. Like a lobster person? Prosthetic grippy. No, 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 no. Like a... Lost her hand in a tragic childhood accident and then had it replaced. Does it have to, to be try tragic? To like Buster? Yeah, she wasn't excited about losing her hand. Did it have to happen when she was a child? No, but it did. Was it a seal? A seal attack? No, it was probably like a farming accident. I'm just really glad that it wasn't a uh, giant gerbil attack because that could she be She would be terrified of a giant right gerbil. Now. Don't feed that cow. That's how I'm picturing the farm accident. Yeah. I've never been a farmer, but I think cows are bloodthirsty. Uh, so Arjun the goblin was still with you in that room, right? Yes. TBP. I'm not asking you. Oh, uh, what? What did you ask? The, the goblin that didn't Arjun. fall down. Cause oh, yeah, I guess so. Roger pulled the gnome from B into the hole with him, but Arjun just continued to walk down the hallway with yeah, you. Yeah, I don't really remember that happening because I felt like it was my job to solve the puzzle, and I think if I had realized that Arjun was there, I would have asked for help. <laughs> Arjun wasn't going to help you. Oh, right. Okay, okay. So it checks out. Yeah. It doesn't stop us from asking for help. Yeah, it's true. All right, so we're all back. The gang's all back together again. I think we should tell Mint that she should just open the door and let us through. The door's already open. Oh, we should go through it then. All right, you walk through the door into an enormous cavern that has this giant circular wheel door, but it is missing its like front cover, and there are a bunch of gears exposed, and there's a dwarf there who has her entire head and face shaved clean smooth, and she's working with a kobold who is wearing a large gold chain around his neck. They seem to be working on the door, and they turn around, and the dwarf says to you, Oh, what are you guys doing here? We're trying to get to the top of the Mountain of Fame. Welcome to the Gate of Fame, the puzzle dungeon that prevents you from just walking up and becoming famous. Smart, smart. You will need guile and grit and gumption and fortitude and... Maybe some small fighting skills to make it through alive. Didn't we already beat that? Yeah. Normally, I give this speech at the beginning because I'm supposed to be the front, but everything's a little wonky right now because we just had another adventuring crew go through here, and they got through, and then things didn't go well, and we didn't get to reset the traps properly. You had to kill one Did of them? Did they die? With a mohawk? No. You want us to kill them? Maybe. I don't care. I'm just here to run the, this village, and we're paid by the... We're not paid by anybody. 
Uh huh. Uh, I'm just here to run this. Insight check. I got a 19. She seems to be trying to explain the situation to you. Do you need some help there with your situation or? Well, the problem is that the door to the Goblin Pass is broken and no one can make it through the Gate of Fame while it's broken to get to the Goblin Pass. And I don't really know how to fix it. Who broke it? Well, that's the problem. We're missing a really important specialized gear. What's it look like? Like a mountaineering kit? Like a no, like a cog. Yeah, like what shape? Like a circle with teeth. That's it. No, no, no. no. But it's really specialized because it has different sizes of teeth and stuff. All right. Well, why don't you just order one from a manufacturer? Because this is a unique door that was made once, and we don't really have money as much as we just subside off of our own farming and uh, the sheep that Osin grazes on the Great Plateau. And then Nalarin goes, the Great Plateau? That's where I'm headed. Arax, the dwarf that I don't know if you got her name yet, goes, yeah, well, we can get to the Great Plateau. That's not difficult. We just can't get through the door of fame to Goblin Pass. Well, where did Death Saves go then? Through the door before it was broken. Do you think they broke it? No. They probably did it intentionally. I think you should withhold the fame from them just because of this. They're disqualified. Do you want help looking for this cog? Yes. All right. I'm going to investigate the room. I want to ask if they looked like under their beds. Where was the last place you had it? Yeah. In the door. Did you look in the door? The door's open right now. Not open to pass through, open to fix. Did you look in the refrigerator? Because sometimes you put stuff in the refrigerator and then you forget when you're on the phone. Yeah. We don't even have a refrigerator. Uh, I got an 11 on my investigation. But everything is a cool 55 degrees down here in the subterranean. All right. Well, did you look everywhere in this cave? There's a lot of cave here. Uh, okay. What did you roll? An 11. I'll, I will also investigate. I'll also investigate. 22. Five. You notice, Wendy doesn't notice, Roger notices that there's a gear missing from the door. Does he know what it looks like? Like, if he saw it, would he recognize it, that it fits there? It looks like a really complicated machine. Is it, we're inside of a cavern, we can't climb over the door? No. Is there another way around this door? No. Well, you can go back down to the village, or you can go out to the Great Plateau, If we go out to the Great Plateau, can we come back along the edge of the mountain and check to see if the gear fell out on the outside? No, because it goes along the pass, and the pass is impassable. They should rename that then. Yeah. That's That's just bad marketing. The pass is the only passable part of the impassable mountain face. Is it like a pocket door? No, it's like a giant, it rolls. It's like a round door. Yeah, like into the wall? No, along the wall. And there's nothing along the wall? No, the door is the whole apparatus. Maybe it opens like a like a camera aperture. Sick. Yeah, that would have been a lot cooler if we had a cool DM. But then it'd be weird because how can the apparatus be inside the door if the door... See, this is complicated. Was anybody following death saves on their trials? Like, do you assign... I'm asking RX a dwarf. Do you assign somebody to, like, follow them along? Is that Index's job? No. If they pass the trials, we let them through. Hmm. But luckily, everyone that works here, aside from Osin, who is our quote-unquote minotaur, is here in the room right now. Do you think anybody would have motive to take this? Like what? We're like a community of friendly people. We are the Femari people. From me seems like he's got some motives. And I point at him accusingly. Not from me. He's our friend. From me. Says me? Yeah, I'm going to assume that you're guilty until proven innocent, so start talking, bud. Frumby, as your lawyer, I got to tell you, you don't have to say anything. Just come and talk to me. We've got client, attorney, privilege. You know what I mean? All right, I want to speak to my lawyer. All right, come on over here. And we step off to a side corner. Okay. I perk my ears up. All right, listen, Frumby, you and I both know it's not looking good. What? It's not got looking good? a lot good? of circumstantial evidence on you. What? And your character evidence is looking bad, too. 
What's my character evidence? Well, can you pinky promise that we're friends now? I thought you were my lawyer. Yeah, you can't have a lawyer if you're not friends with them. If you're a lawyer and a friend, then isn't that a conflict of interest? You know what? You might be right about this one. I was testing you. You passed. Now, all you gotta do is tell me where that cog is. And then what we'll do is we'll cause a distraction and I'll pretend to find it. And you'll be off the hook. I don't have the cog, though. No, I'm telling you, we have attorney-client privilege. You can tell me. Okay, I don't have the cog. All right, I give, I give Wendy the high sign. The what? The high sign. Yeah, what's that look like? Like the hello sign? No, I hold my hand straight up, but my wrist is highly angled, as if it's like a scythe. And then I rotate my wrist like a chopping motion. Like the no-go sign? Yeah. You call that the high sign? In this case, it's the high sign. Okay. What does high mean in this uh, instance? It's like, lets her know, you know? Let's her know what? Frumby doesn't have it. That's called high? There's no reason for you to need to know, because Wendy knows. I would like to ask RX if the wheel smells like anything. Uh, brass? All right, I'd like to do a smell check. Or? Because I'm a cat. Grease, maybe? I got a good sniffer. All right, roll a sniff check. With advantage? Why? Because I'm a cat. Do you want help? Because you could take Lars, you know? That's like two sniffers for the price of one. Yeah, I want a double sniff. Lars is good at sniffing because he's half dog. So how does that work? Uh, If Lars is willing to help, I guess he can add plus two. Sixteen. All right. You smell an entire giant door apparatus that smells like brass and oil. Precisely as how the gear would smell. Just like how a trumpet might smell. But then I smell the rest of the room to see if I can smell it somewhere. On somebody or around the room. I get real close. I get up and personal. I smell people's armpits, their knee pits, all their pits. Okay. Well, Arax and Troxic both smell like this brassy grease. Because they're like... Troxic. The kobold that is helping Arax. I want to ask Troxic a question. Okay. Where'd you get that gold chain, dude? Uh, it's mine. Yeah, but how can you afford it? I hear you guys don't make any money here. Uh. And then I intimidate him into telling me the truth. Nine. He goes, it was a gift from a friend a long time ago. Do I recognize it from any of the Death Saves characters? No. Or from your pibbling? The turncoat? Nalarin? Nalarin. Nalarin? Is Nalarin missing a necklace made of gold chains? You've never noticed them to have been wearing one since you met them. You said it was a gold sash. And peach. Wasn't there peach? Did you say sash? The sash did not turn into a necklace. Yeah, he said a gold sash and then a silver crown, and we Uh, we shit talked it earlier, remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. Jerks. Mint says, I don't think I ever saw you wear it. You got that a long time ago? And then Troxy goes, I don't wear it a lot, but I've had it for a long time. Insight check. Yeah. I also do that. 22. 17. Okay, well, Mint seems to be telling the truth. But Troxic doesn't. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, yeah, Troxic? If you've had it for so long, then how come it has a special engraving on the inside that says Sally Shitstain rules? And then when he goes to look at it to see, then I'm like, aha, so you don't know because you got it just a minute ago. He does look at the back of it and he goes, there's nothing on There's no. Aha, so you don't know what it's like. So you haven't had it for very long, do you? Have you? I've had this for a long time. Oh, yeah? Then what's your birthday? I don't remember my birthday. You're not even Troxic, are you? What? I turn to RX and I say, clearly your kobold friend has been bribed by the previous band that came through here to keep us from getting up the mountain. I think if you search him, you'll find that he has the cog on him. He can't have been bribed by the previous band that came through here because I was with him the whole time. Maybe you were bribed too. Then you admit that you're both bribed. Let's check your personal belongings. And then I wait for them to take us to their foot lockers. What? They have to show us. That's attorney-client privilege. You're not my attorney. Yeah, but Frumby is being charged and we are given the legal No duty. one's charging Frumby. To clear his name, he's innocent. 
What if I just cast knock on this door though? We all said it. I don't, you want to try it? Do I think it will work? Is it locked or is it jammed? You don't think knock is going to open this door. Okay. All right. I'm going to take Lars for a little walk around just to sniff some more areas where they're, while they're interrogating these two. Listen, Troxic, here's the thing. No one wants anything bad to happen to you. No one wants to take the chain away from you. But we have this giant gerbil, and if it doesn't eat, it starts eating whatever is most similar to the small lizards it used to eat in the wild. For your safety, I'm going to need you to get that cog out, put it in the door, and get us out of here before the gerbil loses control. Is this some sort of intimidation check? Yeah. Well, I rolled a one, so I got a seven. Okay. He goes, I don't think the gerbil eats kobolds. All right, I'm going to try a different tack. I'm going to try and persuade him, because clearly he's been bribed once before, so I'm going to try and persuade him that he should help us by giving him something else. So I offer him a choice between... (laughs) You're doing this in public in front of everybody? Yes. I offer him the choice between my Inganalian bandana, the hacksaw... That I got my hippogriff plushie or my mage bowl championship t-shirt. And I try to persuade him that he should take one of those things in order to give us the cog. What was back. the third one? The hippogriff plushie? Yeah. 14. I think he says, uh, I don't understand why you're trying to bribe me. We're just trying to fix a door. I know you have the cog man. I'm just trying to get you on our side. Look at all this cool shit I have. Arjun says, clearly Death Saves didn't give that necklace to Troxic because it's a goblin necklace. We all turn our eyes accusatorily towards Arjun. Arjun looks left and looks right. And he says, yeah? If it's a goblin necklace, then you seem like you might be implicated, Arjun. You do seem like a goblin. Why would that implicate me in stealing a cog? All the pieces are coming together. Everything's making sense. The puzzle is nearly complete. Turn over the cog. I don't have the cog. And then uh, Rx says, to be fair, uh, Arjun is part of the door of always a liar, always a truth teller, because Arjun always tells the truth. And so it's really easy for him to just tell the truth all the time. So if he says he doesn't have the cog, I bet he doesn't have the cog. Oh, Okay. But did you ever think he's sick of telling the truth all the time? In order for us to believe that he always tells the truth, he's going to have to say something extremely embarrassing that's true about himself. Uh, he's not in any way magically bound to tell the truth. He's just really bad at lying. We'll be the judge of that. Rx says. I turn to the goblin. I'm like, hey, hey, a. Hey? Hey, a. Hey. Hey, 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 hey. Um, where is... Your friend that's supposed to be with you at that door, since you like did your buddy up to look like a goblin. Oh, usually Rx helps me with the truth and lying because she understands the puzzle better than I do. And you were in charge of the truth usually. Well, Frumby, because Rx was working on the door, then Frumby was helping me out with the door. Okay. But Frumby usually does the dice. But so Index was doing the dice, but Index usually sets up the buckets. But since Index was doing the dice, then Ardo had to do the buckets. And since Ardo was doing the buckets. Is Ardo, are the buckets the flowers? No. No, no, no. That's the water puzzle. Oh, oh, oh. No, Minz does the flowers. She still did the flowers. Okay. Who's Ardell? We don't have Ardell on our list. Ardell is the short human with the um, claw hand. She was the one that opened the door whenever Frumby pulled the lever. Ardell's the one that put the key in the bucket, or forgot to get the, bu- the key back out of the bucket. All right. Um, I turned to Ardell, because we're all in this room, right? Yeah, everybody's right. here except for Osin. What does this key go to that you were talking about for getting and putting in the wrong place? Where does that key go? The door out of the room. But the bucket with six liters, it drops the key... To oh. the door. So that didn't happen because something else happened instead of going through that door. Do you guys? Did you guys not use the key? No. Rumby messed with it. I have the key still on my person. Nalaren says, 
There's an old Elvish proverb that says, everything that can go wrong will go wrong. So the only person that's, that's not here is Odin. Odin. And why not? She's down in the cave with the sheep. Should we go check on Odin? Osin? If you want. She doesn't fit up the stairway because she's like eight feet tall. Wait, how tall are you? Eight feet tall. Oh, she might fit up the stairway then. Although you didn't fit up the stairway because you were up here. I want to ask Rx why she had to go take care of the door and couldn't stay at the door puzzle. Rx says, oh, I'm in charge of the whole situation. I'm the leader here. All right. So who do you think took the cog? I don't know. Insight check. 18. She seems to not know. I think maybe we need a clue board. And then we can put all the pieces together. And then Tim Curry needs to like bust out of some room somewhere. And I was going to say, like, when you need the clue, clue board, do you really just need like the little toy revolver and candlestick? I don't need any of that shit. I just need Tim Curry. Wow. To like explain it all seven different ways. I think there are only four endings. Let's let's walk it back. We talked to Frumby. We tried to intimidate him into telling us that he took it. Frumby doesn't know shit. Yeah. Frumby's actually It's not Frumby, it's Frumby. Frumby also doesn't know shit, and it's kind of stupid. Did I mention that this community is called the Famari people? No. I did, but you weren't listening. But it's F-A-M because it has to do with fame, the mountain of fame. So it's Famari. It's not Famari, it's Famari. We talked to Troxic, and we were suspicious about his gold necklace. I still don't think that we've, like, gotten to the root of that. Yeah, I don't think we got to the root of that. He was bribed by somebody. To hide the cog. And Rx seems to not know what the deal is. But it was suspicious to me that Rx decided to leave the door puzzle because it messed with all the other puzzles. It was like a chain reaction. Sure. We haven't heard a lot from Index, though. I'm going to say, hey, Index. Yeah? Can't you fix this door real quick because you're a robot? Can't you fix this giant pile of flesh real quick because you're made of flesh? Yes. Oh. I literally can. Well, then, how come when you were in that pile of bones in the basement with Osin, you didn't just make them all alive again? You don't want to bring them back. That's a good point. We did kill them because they were all bad people. They were only into fame for nefarious reasons. I will trade you. Or wanted to kill goblins. This key, and I produced the key that I got from the fountain. If you can point me towards the cog or the personal effects of all the people who work here. That's our key anyway. You have to give that key back. That's property of the Fumari people. I didn't sign a thing that said that I would give it back. All right, we'll make a new one. No, you have to trade me. We have so many keys, man. I think we should do a vote where we make everybody vote on who they think took the cog. Play a game of yeah. werewolf real quick. Everybody point straight up in the air, and then on the count of three, everyone point at who you think took the cog. Okay. Everyone in the room agrees. All right. I'm ready. I'm ready. Who's counting down? Three, two, one. Troxac. Yeah, that's how I want to point at, too. Troxic. 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 Uh, so... Who you point at, big guy? I'm pointing down those stairs because I want to go talk to this Osin character, just regardless of whether... Yeah, you never met Osin. Yeah, I want to go see who this person is. So, uh... You know, big guys got to stick together. We got, like, the secret handshake. Maybe you can borrow that Minotaur costume and then you can play it, you can wear it at our next Then I can face forward, finally, you know? So, Frumby, Troxic, and Mince all point at Windy. Arjun... Ardell and Rx all point at Roger and Index points at uh, the big guy. Nalarin points at Arjun and Lars just starts stamping his foot. Nervous. So this is a pretty concise victory. I think this is a conspiracy. I'm convinced they're all in on it now. Rx goes, I don't know. So uh, we got three votes for Wendy and we got three votes for Roger Stewart. No one else has more than two votes. How so could we possibly have I taken it? I think we it? re-vote and you can only pick one of the two of them. And then whoever that is, we put to death. Hey, all right. How are we going to put them to death, though? Just like axes. Walk the plank off the mountain. Make them fight the Minotaur. Make them fight the Minotaur. Wait. All right, everyone point your hands up. And I say, wait, 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 wait. Three, two. And then I book it and I run towards the private quarters. You know where the private quarters are. Yeah, but it's got to be round, you know. What are we waiting on? 
You can't just kill us. It makes no sense for one of us to have taken it. We're not included in the voting. You can't vote for one of us. It has to be one of the Famari people. No, it was here. That's in the rules. You, you got- clearly weren't listening. That is racist. It's not racist at all. Why? There's no race involved. That is peopleist. Culturalist. Clanist. Why does it have to be a Famari person? Because all of us have the singular goal of getting through this door. I mean, we can also include Nalar, and I'm fine with that. Unless you think the big guy's afraid that if we get too famous, then we'll have to play shows. No, man. Whatever. I'm going to go down to the basement. You guys want to come? No way. Last time I was down there, I almost got killed. Yeah, I agree. I'm going to stay up here. Keep them from voting secretly while we're gone. Index says, to be fair, this party of adventurers still hadn't gotten here when the gear went missing. Because if they had been here, then RX would have been in the door for the truth and, and false yeah, puzzle. Index, thank you yeah. for pointing out that obvious fact. Finally, logic. we have someone who can use cold, hard logic. Frumby says, that is a good point. So now we vote again, but you can only vote for people that are, aren't Wendy, Roger, or the big guy. Lars didn't do it either. Wait, or Lars. Nalaren wasn't here either. I'm fine with them voting for Nalaren. Three? No. I No, man. No. you. Nalaren was out with us in the woods. Like, All I, right. All right. Fine. You can't vote for Nalaren either. I don't know what we're voting for 100%. I just got caught up in the moment. I think we're voting to ransack their personal goods to see if the cog is hidden in it. Uh, yeah, sure. Is that what we all thought we were doing? I just thought maybe we should go look in all the rooms again. I figured that they, the collective Famari people, knew themselves better than we did, so they would probably know who was guilty. But they all voted for you guys. So it seems as though a second vote isn't going to help. Yeah, but now they can't vote for us. Let's pour back. Are there any rooms that we didn't get to? I turned to the little robot, and I'm like, hey, is it cool if I refer to you as a robot? Uh, Do you have a preferred term? I guess um, automation. You can't call me index? Okay, I'm going to try hard. Okay, index, I got a question for you. Okay. How well do you know this place that we're in? Not just this room, but like this place. And I gesture widely. to Fame Mountain? Yeah. The Mountain of Fame? And like the, the part where well, the I know are. our area. How well do I know the Gate of Fame? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty well. Sick. Oh, the door that we're at right now is not the gate of fame. The whole place is. Yeah, the whole. Okay. From the dwarven doors to the circle door. Wheel door, you called it. Which I thought was a stupid name for a door. To the wheel door. It sounds like real door, but with a lisp. The circle door. All right, Index. uh, You say you know it well. So let's like brainstorm this place all the way through, right? We came in through those big old doors. Into a room. The dwarf doors. What's in that first area? Just like holes in the floor? Are there doors? Like, what's it look like? It's like a cavern. Right? And there's like a door at the other end. Because I went through there and there's like flower pots and stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. So I've been into a flower pot room. And so have all of the rest of you. Right? Yes. So where else have you all been? So we get a like a list of where we've been and then index can kind of help us out and see what places we haven't seen. Well, I don't trust index. Malaren says I was in the uh, chess room. Chess. Okay. Oh yeah. There were no cogs in there where nothing was set up. Because you were too busy stealing cogs. Windy, who, was in, windy. who was in charge of the chess room? Bring it down. Bring it down. Take away the accusatory tone. that solve this yeah, like windy. adults. Let's just ask very calmly who as in what idiot was supposed to set up the chess room? Raj, take a walk, man. I think Ardell was in charge of the chess room. Ardell. What? What happened in the chess room? I had to do the bucket room. But you didn't even do that right. It was the first time I ever set up the buckets. I throw the key to Ardell. She Put that you. in the right place, but not in the fountain this time. Okay. Since we're all stuck here forever, why don't you walk me down to the chess room, show me how to do that in case another group shows up right now. We can set that up. She hands the key to Index, and he puts it, like, in his chest. All right, then I follow Ardell down to the chest room, but I'm secretly looking for the cog there. Okay. And I wink at Wendy so she knows. She takes you to the chest room. Roll an investigation check. I just want you to know that I interpret his wink as, I'm going to go get some. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no. I didn't roll well. 
Five. Okay, you don't see anything on the way down. But you get down to the chess room. There's an enormous chess board on the floor. This room is much larger than the bucket room. It's a chess board, which is, what, eight by eight, correct? And alternating black and white squares. If you play chess, tweet at us. Well, it would go, like... It's eight by eight. It would go castle... It's eight by eight, guys. I and know. Then there's and, a, then and then bishop, monk, and then bishop, and then knight. Did you say monk? And then king, and then queen, king, and then and queen. So yeah, eight by eight. Yeah, eight Inspector by eight. Gadget. I agree. Um, she's like, I don't know what they were talking about. All of the chess pieces are along the wall over here, but well, there aren't you supposed to set them out? There are only like six of them and she's like, yeah, yeah. So the player is supposed to have possession over the black knight. And then the white pieces are set up in a fashion where there's only one set of moves that can work where you can take out the king with the knight because the rest of the spaces are, what do you call it when a chess piece threatens another space? Is it called threatening? Yeah. So you just set them up, right? And then, uh, you know, but Roger, why don't we talk about why you really wanted to come down here? Why, why did I really want to come down here? Because you want to talk about who took the cog. Yeah. Who was it? That's what I'm trying to find out from you. How much do you trust these people? I think it was Wendy. Yeah, Wendy's been sneaky and she's been confusing the whole time. Is there anybody that adventures with you that likes to collect random bits of things? Yeah. Who? It's Nalarin. Because when we met them, they had a whole bunch of weird cookies. Weird cookies? Yeah, apparently they didn't even taste good. You ate one, you jerk. No, I didn't. You didn't? <laughs> no. <laughs> we heard they were not good. So we have to corner Nalarin. No. They're too powerful. If we corner them, they'll murder us all. Including Osin. Wait, that hilt that they carry around on their waist is actually a sword? Yes. This is a ticking time bomb of a situation. A very powerful magical weapon that can sunder the earth in two? I think so. That's why we have to get them out of here before they lose their temper. When I said earth, I meant prime material plane. Okay. Does my character know about this? About the prime material plane? No, 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 no. That magical weapon that you're talking about. Like, I noticed the hilt. But you this, saw them carrying like a childhood it. noticing, like, I've known that. They've had it forever. No, nah, they may have got it like since you've become an adult. But you noticed it, and if you roll high enough on your arcana check, then I'll let you understand that that is a magical blade. Sick. All right. I don't think that there's a cog down here, based on how I looked around. Did you look underneath all of those chess pieces? He rolled an investigation check. Did you listen? No. It was a five. Oh, yeah. Then I bet you're right there. So cool. All right. All right. So the fear bulb wants to go down and see Osin. Yeah. All right. So you go with Index, who leads you down that staircase. Well, leads you back into the plant room and then down that staircase. If I like just go really slow. Yeah. I decided you can fit. So that means Osin can come up and be part of the party too. If you want to invite her when you get down there. All right. You go into the plant room, you go down those stairs, you come to a landing that has four doors in it, and another set of stairs that continues downward, and index continues downward, and you get down I'm like, to the hey, bottom. wait, 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 index. Yeah. What's in all these uh, these doors here? Oh, these are puzzle doors. Like, which one's which? Uh, that one's the bucket room, and that one's the dice room. Uh, that one, we're working, we're still building it out. So, like, we can't go in there? But it's a very complex Rube Goldberg machine that you have to put together. It's like playing mousetrap. Like, full of, like, things, and maybe we should just go look real quick and make sure that the cog's not in there? Yeah, do you want to look in there? Yeah. What's that fourth door, though? Uh, that's the domino room. Ooh, we should check that out, too. I have to make up a domino puzzle? Because I said domino room? (laughs) Yeah, it's starting to seem that way. Crap, I should just shut up. All right, we go into the Rube Goldberg room. All right, there's all kinds of crazy stuff, like um, a beach ball, a windshield wiper, a shovel, and a pail, and a bunch of rope, a whole variety of like marbles. There's a bunch of books that have varying thicknesses and sturdinesses of their spines. They're, um, you know, just stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to take a little investigation. Roll an investigation check. 21. 
You don't find any cogs, but you do find some levers and pulleys. Did I pull on them? No, they're like on the floor. Like to be put together. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, uh, Inex, let's go down to that domino room real quick, too. Just give that a good look over. Okay. You go to the domino room? Yeah, yeah. All right. You open up the domino door, and there's a bunch of dominoes. Four foot by two foot. Only like plywood thickness. They're like an inch or three quarters of an inch thick. But they're all painted black with white pips. And they all have different numbers of pips on them. All right, I want to investigate for the cog. All right. 23. All right, you don't find a cog, but you do discover the solution, which is putting them in a certain order. Okay, instead of that, I try to, like, set them up like a card tower. Okay, they don't stand super well because they're, like, four feet long and only, like, three quarters of an inch. Right, like a card tower. Oh. How'd I do? Great. Sweet. All right, I leave that. Let's go index. Let's go down to the basement. Where is the missing cog needed to proceed to the Mountain of Fame? Does the Minotaur have any helpful information regarding its whereabouts? Are the Famari people correct that it was stolen by Wendy or Roger? Find out next time on Bardic Mystery Tour. It's the Bardic Mystery Tour. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Bardic Mystery Tour is recorded at Looking for Group Pittsburgh. Looking for Group Pittsburgh is a land center in the Brookline neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. If you're in the area, stop by for games, co-working, or events. Find more information or schedule your next party at lfgpgh.com.